The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman on this Wednesday. Feels a little funny to be a Wednesday, but it is a Wednesday. Wednesday, the 19th of January. And we're looking at the Dow up 68. It was up quite a lot more. It was up at the 35,547 level. Now it's over 100 points lower than that. Uh, up 73 at 35,444. One of the reasons why we wanted to go short, and we, we, we did go short. We actually wanted to go short the very day of the high of 36,952.65 on the 5th of January. I decided to delay for a day instead. I, I had everything typed up, and then I just changed and said, let's wait. Um, was because it was in a leg D up against the daily inside track repellent zone that was coinciding with the weekly inside track repellent zone. And it happened to coincide with the red lower inside track trend line, which is also the inside track repellent zone. And I thought that at this particular point, the upside looks very limited. The downside looks more like a sideways, slightly lower lows to lower highs potential. And then we went through through the dreaded H pattern, et cetera, et cetera. We've been short from about 36,300. Um, you know, quite a little bit off the, uh, the all-time high. But what's really important about this is that the, I always look at the tide. And for me, the tide has changed from moving up to moving down. So now let's go through this in that regard, this node. This is this fractal that uh, only changes in size but never changes in pattern. What we're looking at is the trend of the market has hit some really serious currents that are pushing back on every rally. And as a result, look, the Dow is underneath the left side, low of 35,639, the dreaded H pattern, what we've been discussing for the last week or so in the day. But the weekly chart, although it's now under the 14 period moving average, it's been there many times before. And, the, and unlike the Dow with the nine period now under the 14 period moving average, a negative, the nine above the 14 in the weekly chart is still a positive, even though look at the on-balance volume at the lows. MACD, deflected lower for the second time. Stochastic in the weekly at 73%. Monthly chart is still very good, but all the, all the technicals are turning down, but that nine is still way above the 14 period moving average. So that says, and I'll be trying to give a, a bigger picture of the next uh, the next few days on what I'm looking at. But on the shorter term, I believe that we're in sell modes in almost all the indices, all the key indices. And what's really important is that it is in the daily charts. Now, let's go to the weekly charts. Weekly chart on the, on the uh, Dow. So far, we have to wait for Friday. It's the middle of the week. I'm not going to make any predictions right now. That's just futile. Look at the S&P. The S&P at this particular point up 18 at 45.96. Right at the lower rising inside track up channel support line. We've gone under it, closed under it yesterday. We went with a dreaded H pattern, unsuccessful because it went below. But now we're trying to rally above, above the 4582.24 high of about the 10th of uh, January. We're at 4598, that is above. The weekly chart has now seen the price go under the 14 period moving average yet again. It's done that about uh, four times in the last seven, uh, seven weeks or eight weeks. This is when you start to see the greatest hazard because the MACD is deflecting lower and lower. The stochastic's now under 80% or 75%. On balance volume is negative. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of this detailed work because there's just a chance that I might not be able to make tomorrow for my show. So with that said, 
the monthly chart has gone to a leg B. That's absolutely amazing. At this point, just if you had to spin a coin, this is where you would say the chances are, even though the coin doesn't know whether it's going to be heads or tails, the chances are really good that this time we get a lower high for February so that the 48.18.62 all-time high in leg B in the monthly chart doesn't get taken out all the way through the last day of February. That's just a guess. It's, it's a, a best understanding of one's own technical veracity. And that's the way I'm looking at it. So far, the weekly chart is going to be the clue. And that's the middle chart right here, daily on the left. Middle on the, is the weekly. On the right is the monthly. All I can say is that the technicals have deteriorated enough in the daily and the weekly to suggest that the 45, 70s is going to be hit at some point fairly soon. And that will take the green 9-period moving average under the 14-period moving average in the weekly. Just a guess. We'll see if that's the way it works. Certainly, some surprising news that takes the uh, S&P into the 45, 50s, 40. 4650s, I'm sorry, 4650s, that's another 60 points up from you, 600 Dow points. I don't know what can do it just at this particular point, but certainly anything that can do it will be very, very positive. So we've got the Dow, sell mode daily, very close to at least a sell signal in the weekly, maybe even a sell mode, we just don't know. Exactly the same thing for the uh, S&P, uh, sell mode in the daily, very close to sell signal in the weekly. That'll be a PG rather than a G slash C. And the monthly chart, still very positive. QQQ, one, two, three, NDX 100. May, has it made a lower low than the January low? It's uh, held in the 370. It's at 374.30 right now. It's up 3.78. Good intraday action so far. But the weekly chart has, in fact, gone from a sell signal uh, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be an upgrade to sell mode this week, but I have to wait for Friday at 4 o'clock. And that's the way it is. So it's a little bit more concerted to the downside. And the monthly chart has already got the second candle that hasn't made a new all-time high at 408.71. Here we are at 374. We're down 30 points, uh, 34 points from that high. Uh, that's going to be tough to, to make up unless something spectacular happens. IWM, sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly. Sell signal, no, not yet in the monthly chart, but really close. Now, question came up. <coughs> Excuse me. You were liking, you were liking the um, MD, the value, IWN for Nancy, a lot more than the IWM. Why is your, what's your status right now? Well, my status is that the even the IWM, the ICS Russell 2000 ETF, is going sideways in the daily chart in the sell mode. The weekly is in the sell mode, and the monthly has made a PE. It's just holding better than the MDM, IWM, and that's pretty really important. And we'll also look at the MDY, which is the big cap. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So the MD, MDY, which is the S&P mid-cap deposited receipts uh, at 495.08, down 80 cents. That's in a sell mode as well. So, I mean, the majority of indexes, let's actually look at the XLK. Hey, where did I type that? Let's do that again. Oh, I typed it in the den. No, type it on the chart. <clears throat> XLK, yep, it's down from the peak D that it made. At about 176, 177, these double tops are amazing. And now what we're looking at is that we're trading at uh, the XLK is up $1.72 at 163.50. So it's gone from the, let me give you the exact figure right now. I want to be as thorough as possible today. I have so many questions. 177.04, let me just type that in. 177.04. That was the uh, December high. And yet we are at 163. We've hit 161 already. So there are uh, the, the XLK is finally the daily has gone to a sell mode. The, the weekly chart is potentially at a sell signal. We'll wait until Friday. And the monthly chart is in a leg D, probably a peak D by the end of January. Okay, now let's go to the SMHs. SMHs. Tried rally earlier today, went up to 297.69, trading at 295.02. Uh, this is the one that uh, we consider to be a highly vulnerable. Uh, we'll see what happens here. The SMHs, all time high, double top 318.82 on the 22nd of November, 318.69, around about the, the 20, uh, around about the uh, 3rd or so of January. Little double top, but it's also got double bottoms around about the three uh, 288 area, and it's trading it right now 296. So in this particular instance, I've got a sell. Probably today will confirm a sell mode in the daily, but nothing in the weekly. But it's suggesting there's a chance that this cluster formation, if, if it starts to trade in the low 280s, somewhere around 286, 285, 284, that's going to be a serious. Uh, a serious rollover pattern saying that the semis, as great as they've been, are now a little bit vulnerable to uh, profit taking. Dow's down 17 right now. It's one of the reasons why we want to remain short. And that's going to be very important because what we're looking at here is that rallies, in the, when the tide changes, rallies reverse to the to the downside. Just as in the, on the, on the when the tide is going up, all rallies 
all weakness gets bought and, and the market lands up closing higher. So we've got a reversal of a trend there. All right, finally, we can get to gold. A lot of questions about gold. Wow. Gold is up 24.6. We've been talking about this for some time. Uh, is this a brand new, is this an old D or is this a brand new B? I'm suspicious of the, um, calling it a part of the previous double top PC1, C2. I think this is probably right now leg B, but I'm going to be very conservative. I'm going to call it a D to say, yep, you've got enough indications to say it's a continuation pattern of the previous up move. I also have some indications saying, you know what, if the stochastic at 72 can get to over 80% in the next couple of days with the price holding 1825, probably pushing to the 1840s, this is fantastic action. All right, so gold is exactly what we've been looking for. One of the reasons why we went along a gold stock uh, about a week ago um, was there is a chance that within the rectangle formation, you see this inside rectangle that I made, this narrow uh, trading band, and then it broke to the bottom, and then it broke to the top, and it keeps coming back in. Now, you remember what I was talking about? I said, I know this pattern so well. We saw it in the uh, in the um, Russell 2000. Oh, did I do the Russell 2000? Let me just do that now, because I wanted to show you the pattern. IWM. Yeah, Russell 2000 down uh, 88 at 206.96. The pattern that I discussed for months, not weeks, but months, was the sideways rectangle formation that says in the, in the, in the Chapman Wave methodology, this is just my own personal uh, experience with rectangle formations, is that they can last, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Well, look at this. Back in uh, in March, 234.53 was the high, 207.21 was the low in the IWM on a weekly basis. Uh, it made a, a Chapman Wave Roman candle, which held quite well, which said you can now still work your way to the top. But the rectangle pattern says at some point there's an attempt to break above. But the midpoint of the rectangle is so powerful as a magnet that there's a chance that the price will come back if it breaks from the midpoint and goes lower it'll go to the bottom of the of the rectangle formation then be anticipated and anticipative of a move below in this case below 207.21 and here we are today's low is 206.90 we've gone underneath the left side candle low of late march maybe early april and that's exactly what we were looking at and looking for in the dollar, we are along the dollar from 90.07 way back in 2018. We saw it go to almost, let me just show you the dollar here. And what was I talking about? I said, watch this rectangle formation because we've seen the dollar go from our entry point at 90 all the way to 103 and then back down to the 82.21 and then back up to the 96.91 for a double top. And what happens in the rectangle formation is the price suddenly drops out of the, the, the base of the rectangle. It's just a big surprise. And the surprise is such a surprise that the, 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 the tradable that we're following didn't even have a chance to grab its hat or coat or suntan lotion or whatever it is and has to go back into the rectangle it just barely goes back and then it starts a move that goes down if it takes out the low that was made previously in this case the low that was made five four sessions ago of 94.63 at any point if it takes that out you're in for a longer digestive phase in the tradable that you're looking at. And that would say that the Dow, that the dollar is now highly vulnerable to lower lows and lower highs. And that, folks, gives you the opportunity in gold to move above its wider rectangle formation. And that says 30, 1836 right now, 24.5. Now we can start looking, and I'd said this before, that ugly candle that one of the 22nd of November of last year, where it opens at 1850.9 on the uh, continuous contract. The high is 1853.0. 
round number. And then it plummets that day down to 1805, 50, almost 50 points in a day, and then continues lower and lower and lower. That's the candle we want to see full then. What was the high? 1853. So I don't want to go, I don't want to jump ahead yet because we've only just for the first time pierced the resistance, pierced the resistance. Um, uh, and what we're looking at is this is a leg D slash B. NACD is not great, but it's good. That's what you want. Stochastic's not so great. It's 72%, not 83%. And the on balance volume is running, but look at the gray relative strength how it's starting to move higher. So I suspect that the pattern we were looking at in the dollar was the clue, and that's the reason why we went along a particular gold stock. And we're looking at this as the potential for a move higher, and then it'll come back and retest the 1820s option. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is now down 88. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. What we're looking at here, and this is going to be very interesting, is that gold up 25 is uh, breaking above that inside track repellent zone and that's got your one to one to the upside. That would target about 1842. So let's just take that into consideration. Now look at the silver, SI. Uh, SI, that is a nice move. It wasn't so great early yesterday. 
This is, oh, this is a leg C. Oh, I had to really type that in. C stopping dead right at the 200 period exponential moving average with a high of 24.06. And 24.06 is, in fact, the 200 period moving average. But look at the weekly chart. This is just a bounce within that content. And the monthly chart still looks horrible in silver. However, I have to now consider this as a buy mode because of the MACD stochastics at almost at 80%. On balance volume is really good. Relative strength is building up. So as a laggard, as always, silver suddenly had this big move and all of a sudden the chart looks on the daily a little bit better actually than the, uh, than the daily chart of gold. This is a nice move. What's past doing Pan American silver? Uh, it's a nice green candle, but it really, the stock, I'm a little concerned that the stocks are lagging. And that says to me, follow this. Uh, uh, the answer, Dan, is yes, I do. Uh, I do, I do, uh, because I have limited time sometimes, and that just it doesn't matter to me whether it's a one- or two-minute chart. It's the same patterns that I follow all the time. Now, looking at the um, Dow down 87, the S&Ps only have one. Look what we look at. Look at this, and this is going to be really interesting. Within the context of the GLD, GDX, which is the gold miners, this is the first decent bounce it's had. I can't say that it's sustained. This is just an hour into the trading day, but it's a good sign. And it needs to get above at 31.76, up a dollar 14. It needs to go above 32.08, 32.08. Oh, three. Yeah, 32.09 will start a leg C. And look at the weekly chart, not very good at all. Look at the monthly, just horrible. So the, I don't like the fact that gold is moving higher without the gold miners leading. I love when the gold miners, gold miners lead. But there might be a change, and the change that I'm talking about now is that if you look at the XLF, you remember I have this relationship of all these different segment, segments, like like a like a like a chessboard, or, or more more like a a, um, a puzzle where you're putting all the pieces together and you just find the missing ones so that everything can fit together if it can. But look at the financials, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. It's down 44 cents at 39.47. Peak E in the daily, peak D probably in the weekly chart if there's no new recovery high, and monthly chart leg E. And the reason why I wanted to go straight to the financials is that there's a relationship of the fear so that gold, not gold miners, but gold, the commodity, starts to move higher when there's an anticipation that overall in the spectrum of the geopolitical, uh, geo political, econo, uh, um, how can I call it, um, psychological uh, area where there's nervousness about the financial system. Well, today, Bank of America came out with absolutely, I guess it was really good earnings because it spiraled up uh, from yesterday's close in the 46s. It bounced all the way to 48.58. And now it's trading at 46.70, only at 44 cents. And that's telling me, if you look at J.P. Morgan, and a question came up uh, from a friend just the other day who had been buying a J.P. Morgan. Uh, I, I guess this is a great company. Um, they had great earnings. And what's going on? The fact that it had 169.81 all-time high. Was that an all-time high? No. The all-time high was right there, 170. 172.96 on October the 25th at a peak D. Here it's at a peak G, an alternate count. It has an iron reversal, and from 169 to 148 in less than a week? Wow. I mean, we're talking 20%. We're talking about, sorry, 20, 20 points. And that is, that was at about 14%. 40%. Boom, just like that on good earnings. Um, so I suspect that we're looking at something here that's a little bit different. And that gold, remember I've said for a long time, try to think of gold, the dollar bonds, and the volatility index almost as separate entities, not always specifically related to the market. Well, look at this. Um, the XLF pulling back very sharply from the 41, uh, 66 area all-time high. 
uh, all-time high. Well, the most recent high, five, four sessions ago, now it's 39. Well, two points, three points, that's not a big move down. But in the weekly chart, it's suggesting this is going to be a PD. And that says you could rest a little bit longer, even maybe going to the 37, maybe even 36 area. And that says keep an eye on what happens to gold itself. Now it's up 25.01, not just the GDX. The GDX should actually be a follower at this particular point. Very often it's a leader. In this particular case, it's a follower. And we'll see if the gold stocks, let's look at GLD. Just pick this one up for the moment. GLD, GLD. Why am I not getting that? Uh, there are. Yep, there's your leg D. And it's going into, it's up. 219 at 171.59, up 1.3%. Leg D daily. I hasn't got to a leg D in the weekly chart. That'll take it all the way to the 175, 176 area if it's able to do that. So we're looking at this as a chance that gold itself is going to drag up the, the gold stocks. That's all I wanted to make my point on. And if you look at the, do I still get that XAU? Type in the right place. A dollar XAU. Yep, there it is. And that's starting to move a little bit better. The weekly chart is not great. Monthly chart not great. But the daily says at 132, if it can not just touch 133.80s, the 200 period moving average, if over three to five sessions, it can start to trade in the 136 area Gold is going to have legs. That's really the question I have right now. Is gold, is it sustainable? And the answer is, if, oh, let me go back to gold. That's what you want to use, the root. If gold is able to trade and then hold in the one, in the 1855 area, I would say two out of four sessions needs to close in the 1830s. At that point, it'll be much, much better. In fact, it'll be very good. Okay. Um, High-grade copper. High-grade copper is a nice day today. It's up a little, up 0 0.08 at 4.466. 4.466, yep. Um, what about FCX? Question about FCX. Lagging again. Yeah, it's lagging, but it just made a peak G slash C. A nice recovery high. And the reason why we were expecting, remember I did this yesterday or the day before, 46.10. Well, it couldn't be the day before Friday. Uh, let's see. 4610 was the high on May the 14th. Yesterday's high was 40, 4620. So it went to a higher high. And that says that this is now E slash C in the daily, but you finally got your legs C in the monthly chart. This is acting very well so far. Freeport McMoran, Copper and Gold. I guess copper is the name of the, the title. We'll be back in a moment. Now it's down 54. s is now down 1. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So the question came up, uh, what, what, what is key support for the Dow? Well, just based on the weekly chart alone, close to 34,000, which suggests uh, two things. One is that the nine notes, the 14 period exponential moving average of the monthly chart at 33,573 is absolutely sacrosanct in terms of um, time. How quickly, it, it, if it goes down there, how quickly does it touch it and how quickly does it reverse back up? Is that the low? And then we start a major move for 2022. I, I'll talk more about this as we move on into next week. Um, and I, I don't want to get carried away here. I, we haven't formed the kind of base in the, in the daily chart that helps me work out the, the weekly chart. And the weekly chart is going to help me with the monthly chart. I don't want to just throw out figures. I haven't given you upside levels to say if the Dow starts to trade above 36,100 at any point in the next two, three weeks, that is a big deal. That's very positive. So I don't want to just say, look, we've got our position. Now the market just has to tell us it's all you can do. That's the best you can do. OK, um, a, a nice quote in the den. Uh, Jimmy uh, quotes Steve Burns at... S. Joseph Burns, most traders start to become profitable in the market when they have ceased to pose as its profits. Um, I like that. So it's interesting, Steve Burns. I used to uh, know a Steve Burns trumpet player. He played high trumpet. Um, he was a fantastic uh, tr uh, trumpet player, uh, freelanced around the country. Uh, he was a soloist that I was the conductor for of Gunther Schuller's Trumpet Concert, an incredible piece. I don't even know if there's a recording anymore of that. Um, a very difficult piece, uh, uh, just a really great piece, and Gunther Schuller himself helped me uh, plan out the rehearsals and things like that. Um, and uh, he, uh, Steve did a fantastic job of that piece, very difficult, and uh, I must say. So, all right, let's get back to our story here. Uh, we're looking at uh, the Dow down 55, and now we want to go back to EUR, USD. We want to go back to the currencies. Had a big move of peak E in the daily chart, pulls back. The monthly chart, the weekly chart is still in a sell mode. The monthly chart is still in a sell mode. Daily is back to a sell mode. But with this potential pullback, if it's if it's going to unfold, where's the dollar now? Dollar's down 25 ticks at 95.50. I'm saying it's going to go back into the low 95s, maybe even the 94s, and that's going to be a big deal. That's going to help gold. So the EUR USD should start to find some support here. Then it has to get into yesterday's very big ugly candle. And at 1.133, I suspect it's going to have a rally. I don't think the dollar is staying down for all that long. Therefore, gold might not have, time-wise, it might not have such a big move to the upside. And that says um, that the unless the euro can start to trade above 1.141 and hold there, 
at least on the closing basis of the weekly chart, um, this is just going to be a bounce. And if you look at the USD JPY, which is the yen, dollar yen currency pair, yep, it had a big move up to a peak E as well. It's funny how many charts, even though they should be moving in opposite directions, these days are actually moving together. And that's why I said, please separate in your mind the VIX index, we'll get there in a moment, bonds, we'll get there in a moment, uh, the dollar and gold, because each one's in its own trajectory and has done that for months. So the peak E in the in the Yen, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen currency pair, uh, up in the one uh, in the one sixteens. Now at one fourteen point thirty seven, almost making the dreaded H pattern. Peak D in the weekly hasn't get any hasn't given any signals to daily sell mode. Weekly nothing yet, and monthly leg D holding very nicely. If the yen closes under one thirteen point ninety. That that's a, that's a big negative. If it manages to rally into the 115.2 uh, area, that is really good. I don't know if it's going to do that. But let's go continue here. Uh, questions about platinum. Platinum, we just showed this the other day. Made a peak D, pull back sharply. And now it's a fantastic move to the upside. I have to tell you that the the commodities all over the show are just uh, don't ignore. The fact, this inflationary aspect, because look at this. This is platinum. Platinum up sharply at 1026, up 47. Above the 200 period moving average, that was so far from the 974 level. Just yesterday, it looked impossible. Today, it went right through it, helping the weekly, which doesn't look too good, but helping the weekly to move up. So that's platinum with key support in the 1000 to 996 area. If it manages to get to 1040, that's a breakout from the 200 period moving average. If you look at PLAT, platinum. Platinum's not doing very well. It's it's acting very poorly. It's up 20 cents at 30 point, 39 point 84. This is the platinum. Uh, this is the, basically the ETN or whatever it is. Windmere growth. Is that correct? Let me just make sure I'm talking about the right thing. Plat. Uh, growth leaders. Oh, maybe not. All right. I don't know. I used to I used to have platinum. What did I use for platinum? Anyway, I, I don't have platinum. Listen, look at this. Wheat. Does wheat? Beautiful move to the upside. It started a buy mode. Is it 782? No, I can't say that. It's close to getting into a buy mode. It's got a buy signal in the daily weekly. Doesn't look too great, but it's trading at 782 up 13 and three quarters. Nice move. Soybeans, continuous contract. Um, it had a lousy action after the peak G top, but now it's acting well up 22 and a quarter to 1383. It needs to get to 1389, 1391, and then close above that for two sessions to sell, making a cup formation to retest the previous high. That was the high of uh, January. Was that the 10th? January the 7th. January the 7th of 1415. And Khan, Khan, as we say here, nice move up. Uh, and actually, the nine has just crossed positive. The day's young. Let's see if that can hold, because that says it's now looking uh, better, and it should move from uh, 607 up seven uh, to the if it can close above 611. Let's call it 612. If it can close above 612 in the next two days, it should retest the high that was made on the 28th of December of 617 and three quarters. So far, these are acting very well. That's the reason why we still have along the DBA. Oh, what a nice move. Up 1.23%, up 25 cents at 2020. We're along from the 17, uh, from the 1377 level, up seven points here. This is very nice. Leg D, oh, these breakouts in leg D are really impressive. And it's almost the cup formation that is really nice action. And if it can close above 20.23, that'll negate that peak F as an F, and that'll say probably an alternate count B going to a leg C, and that'll be big, a big deal because the monthly chart in the DB Agriculture Fund will go to a leg E in the monthly. Key supports in the 19.80s. Wow, that is very nice. Um, let's see. Now what we're looking at is... Oh, okay, I've got that, I've got that, I've got I'm just looking around to see those questions that came up. Now, I need to do this. EMN. Look at this. EMN 
at a, at a, at a recovery high. All time high is 130.47. He's trading right now at 129.48 in the Champway Inside Track Repellent Zone with a Doji Weekly Candle. What is it? Eastman Chemical. Look at the way the chemicals are. Look at Dow Chemical. Uh, yeah, the, yep, holding very nicely with a good balance. And look at D. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, the final section. And remember, I just don't know yet if I'm going to be able to do my show tomorrow. So I, I did a bunch of stuff today telling you what to look for. Uh, there is still residual buying that just keeps coming in, even though we're making lower lows and lower highs. That's important. Matt Morgan Stanley. I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, um, Basil, MS, instant restart. No, you can't have a re an instant restart unless within three bars of a peak D, you go to a higher high. Then you get E slash A, and that can give you an alternate count. So all I can say is, um, no, you've got to be careful. Uh, it's down to the 200-period moving average at 93.85. It's trading right now at 96.12, up 2.11. That's good action. But if you look at the monthly chart, it is a leg E. You've got to be a little bit careful here. That's Morgan Stanley MS uh, trading at 96.04. Okay, a couple of quick questions. Um, let's see. I did that. I didn't get to the TLT. I wanted to spend time on that. So the TLT, I did that yesterday. It's made the dreaded H or inverted 
uh, inverted A pattern in the weekly chart. It's a sell mode. If you look at the TBT, beautiful leg, E to the upside yesterday, maybe a peak E today. Is it getting close to some kind of a pullback? I wouldn't be surprised if yields come down just a little bit as the TBT inversion of the ultra short the Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund ETF inversion of TLT. Um, just this is the area where we've got to see some some kind of attempt at some kind of uh, formality in terms of bounces that hold at least for a day or two. What we're looking at is the VIX index at the high of 23.07 right now, not quite at the high. If I'd said this yesterday as well, if we start to see a close towards the high and after three o'clock in the VIX index as the market starts to pull back, be careful for that last hour. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually pulls back a little bit to the 2260s and you see something holding quite nicely into the close. Uh, we've had a, a huge amount of selling. Now we just beat you some kind of a some kind of a, a rally attempt. So uh, just keep in mind what we're looking for. Uh, the Dow, 36,000, 35,000 is a piece of position. That is fine. Up back, 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 up back